For those of you that remember my winter wheat trial from earlier this year, it ended up being kind of a flop. The field basically just dried out like crazy through June and uh, the soil just turned into a brick. And we lost all of our flag leaves, partially due to a viral disease called mosaic that moved in. So it wasn't a, a good situation. Out in the winter wheat field right now and you can see the variability across the field. Definitely not really going to be able to uh, count on seeing anything different in these products in the yield monitor here. It's a pretty radical difference between where there's good moisture and where there wasn't. It uh, really suffered from that drought stress a few weeks ago, but it is producing, you know, decent sized heads. So we will see how it looks. Here's the state of my winter wheat field trials right now. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's suffering pretty bad. So we're in indoor stage, you know, the heads, heads are filled. I don't think they're going to be plump, but they are filling. And uh, we're just, we're totally out of moisture here. It's just dry and hard like a brick in here. So I don't think we're going to see, well, there is no visual difference. Maybe we'll see something in the combine data. So with that trial being kind of a flop, I decided to do the brown water trials this year. The objective was to compare five different biological products side by side in multiple fields and crops to find out what product would fit what application the best. Problems were nobody wants to spray six different products multiple times across a single field and I didn't have time to use a truck mounted sprayer and haul water etc etc so I ended up using small plots with a hand sprayer. So my plots were 10 by 20 feet and I did them using uh, a hand sprayer doing the equivalent of 40 gallons to the acre water rate. So and there's my uh, six plots. Uh, Actigrow systems was the first two trials so one was just plain humic acid and the second was humic acid plus their catalyst which is a potash product. Uh, Nature's Aid, locally made in Alberta, uh, stimulates microorganisms in the soil using a low rate of humic acid and the kinetins extracted from seaweed. Um, the ASLE ATG products, mainly Crop Booster and Green Miracle with uh, a powdered water soluble fertilizer added foliar products new this year. Um, Lignajule, which is a biopolymer made from processed tree lignin, um, supposed to have most, much of the same benefits as uh, humic acids. Also, just a foliar. All right, and here's how the results worked out. So, first field was abandoned. Uh, there was an irrigation problem, and uh, the plots ended up getting flooded, and there was no way you could accurately compare them one to another. Here's one of my uh, biological trials in the wheat, and this one I think is going to be a write-off. There was a problem with uh, irrigation, and this got flooded out, so the humic acid plot looks like crap. Catalyst is looking a little bit better. Nature's Aid looks better yet. And then ASLE, boom, no flooding problem. It looks great. Lignajule, eh, a little bit more of an issue, but overall looks pretty good. So there's no way that I can really compare these with uh, what's happened here. So uh, I think this one is uh, just going to be a flop. Next one was uh, dryland peas. This one actually did look hopeful, but suffered from extreme drought and started to go down on us really quickly. Ended up getting combined while I was on vacation. July 15th here is the state of the pea trials. Here is the humic acid. Humic acid plus catalyst. Here's the nature's aid system. Here's ASLE ATG. And here is lignogel. So out of all of these, probably the lignogel is looking the worst. I don't know why, it's extremely stunted. But uh, the stuff in the control area just outside is really not much better. So I think this is probably due to compaction and drought. Um, yeah, basically <laughs> this whole strip here where I have the trials is looking pretty rough. And the rest of the field isn't really any better. There's the odd spot here and there where we got more moisture holding capacity overall pretty much droughted out and done here is my dryland pea trial strips my little 10 by 20s and as you can see they're missing so I will not be able to take this to yield or to assess this but uh, if I'm really lucky farmers edge will have captured that data but being that a 20 foot you know small strip trial is only about half of the header width uh, Maybe we'll see something, maybe we won't. 
This one was combined about two hours before I was able to get there, so I just barely missed that one. Here's the state of one of my wheat strip trials right now. We got control, we've got humic acid, we've got humic acid plus one application of catalyst, we got soil aid plus one application of crop booster, we've got ASLE crop booster plus uh, the 121010, and we've got a one application of lignajool. Well, it looks like I was one or two hours too slow to get this uh, wheat trial harvested. And uh, yeah, no doubt of there. This one I was able to harvest. This is on corn. Here's my corn trials this week with biologicals. This is Maze X corn. I uh, can't see any big difference from plot to plot. I'm standing in the back of the truck so I can see properly this week. And uh, it's all looking really good. You can see there's definitely some moisture stress. We need to get the pivot going around this dry wind. It's just kicking the crap out of the corn right now. But uh, overall, everything here is looking pretty good. Alright, I'm out here harvesting one of my corn trials. So I got control, humic acid, humic plus catalyst. There's the Nature's Aid system, the ASLE system, and the Lignajool system. Uh, off of the bat, no clear winners. Um, a couple of them, like the ASLE, did have one, one cob that wasn't fertilized fully to the tip, so that'll hurt that score. Uh, what I did was I just walked in into my, uh, my plots, and I harvested five cobs in a row out of a single row. Uh, that's about as fair as I can make it without it taking me hours and hours and hours to do this Although of course doing it this way is not nearly as accurate as actually Taking it to silage and weighing each plot, but these plots are just a little too small for that being 15 by or 10 by 20 feet This one was swathed producer wanted to swath and not straight cut so I wasn't able to take a sample from that This one was corn this one I was able to harvest Okay, and I'm by left bridge. Just got my last corn trial harvested. So here I got control, humic acid, humic plus catalyst. This is the nature's aid system, the ASLE system, and the lignajool. Um, this corn crop did get hailed on at tassel, and you can see it's still a little rough and banged up in here. So I think that's why we're seeing fairly poor fertilization on the ends. And uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I, I, nothing jumps out on me in the data. Pretty much most of them have, you know, somewhere around a 36, a catalyst in the ASLE probably have more 36 kernel long and 16 wides than the other ones, but won't really be able to, uh, to know until I add everything up and throw her in a spreadsheet. And, uh, this next one, this was on wheat. This one actually was harvested and you'll see the results for that one. All right, I think it's harvest time for a couple of my little wheat trial plots. So I'm going to try these ones today. These are irrigated wheat, but it's feeling like it's pretty well dried down. So I'm going to hand thrash out a sample, check the moisture on it, and if it's good, I'm going to go in here, and what I'm going to do, because I don't have any small equipment, and the plots are too small to hit with big equipment and get any rough idea of yield at 10 by 20 feet, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take, say, all the plants out of, we'll say, three feet of a seed row. I'm going to hand thrash those out, on my screens here, collect the samples, and then I'm going to take that and get it precisely weighed, and that'll at least give me an idea. It's not going to be precise, it's not going to be ideal, but it's what I've got to work with. Alright, well, I got her done, but uh, I don't think the dog survived very well. He's kind of bored to death here, but anyways, that's all the samples. The last uh, three, however, these guys, moisture levels are pretty high on them. So the Nature's Aid to Isle and the Lignajool are all pretty high in moisture, so I'm going to have to dry these down or run some calculations to even things out. Okay, well, my results from my hand threshing of the wheat sample, basically, it was garbage. I wasn't able to get them de-hauled enough, and there was just way too much chaff still attached to the grain. So I have made myself a new contraption that I'm going to try out today, I'm calling this the Sample Extractor version 1.01. first version didn't have an aluminum bushing in the bottom. Basically, it's just a steel bar, piece, a couple pieces of chain on it, and an aluminum plate with a hole kind of half drilled through it there to act as a bushing in the bottom. And I'm going to put my sample in there, attach my DeWalt drill onto here, and uh, hopefully my DeWalt doesn't DeWilt on me. All right, well, it worked so good with 10 feet of seed row in it, let's try it for 20. So now I'm taking two full-width seed rows running across 
each trial, one at the front, one at the back. Same seed rolls across all the trials, so we'll see. This should give me a big enough sample I can run a proper moisture test instead of just an handheld tester as well. Well, it looks like it did a decent job. Luckily there's enough weight today that it's fairly easy to win all the time. Chaff is blowing away and the wheat falls straight down. Hopefully. Be 10 or 20 pounds. There you go, that's looking pretty nice and clean now. Not too shabby. All right, I came and uh, borrowed a proper moisture tester and did all my weights as well. And looks like control was the worst, 813 grams, humic at 840, catalyst 950, nature's 8984, ASLE 976, and lignogule 901, which makes the nature's aid and the ASLE pretty much tied. But uh, I do still have to adjust everything for moisture and run through a spreadsheet and look what the rate of return is because all of these products, like, there's a huge price difference between these two products, so got to take that into account. Here's the difference in the sample quality between my two attempts at harvesting that wheat sample. So this was my uh, my failure at the hand threshing, and I was it was still a little too wet. It wasn't quite mature enough, and I just wasn't able to get those hulls off the wheat very well. Whereas with the weed whacker method here with the chain, I did really well. I got it really nice and clean, probably cleaner than a lot of combines. So here's the results on how everything worked out for the wheat. So this was uh, irrigated field, this was hard red spring uh, Brandon variety, and uh, I did my final harvest on September 24th. So control, humic acid, Actigrow system, nature's aid system, ASLE system, and two applications of lignogule foliar. So this is the moistures, how they came off, and the weights, and then I converted all the weights over to 12% moisture to make everything fair and even. So that was where we see the nature's aid start to win here. Uh, the yield per acre, you can see control was 86, and uh, the nature's aid was 104. Um, ASLE system was 102, so just barely behind, and uh, Actigrow was in third place there, and not by, by much. Uh, so the difference in bushels, uh, we're looking, you know, three bushels here, 14, 18, 16, and 9. Um, I calculated it all out for $6 a bushel wheat. So this is your extra income from those extra bushels. So it looks like, you know, nature's aid, you're making extra $108 an acre. Uh, the cost of treatment here, uh, all on the application rate that I did. Now bear in mind that uh, some of these, like the humic acid, I used kind of more of a uh, in-furrow corn rate on here at five liters so that's that would be a, a higher rate than you'd normally use in a crop like this you'd normally you'd use two liters um, I was kind of hoping that I'd see more of an effect using five but it doesn't really look like it but it also brought the price up quite high so and then you add the two applications of catalyst on there for this and you're at 43.10 an acre so pretty pricey product uh, the nature's aid the uh, three applications there come to $11 uh, ASLE two applications of three different products in total come to $53 an acre and Lignajewel two applications uh, which made up about a kind of a mid-rate application for this product was uh, $4.79 an acre so how many you know extra dollars do you make after that cost is off well the humic acid you lost money the act to grow plus the catalyst you made 45 the nature's aid system you made 97.91 so very good there um, the ASLE system you made 45.68, and for the Lignadule you basically made uh, 49.20 after all of your costs. So when you're looking at your rate of return here, the Nature's Aid, you know, $11, you know, in makes you 97 out, and uh, Lignadule, you know, less than five dollars in, 50 bucks back. That is pretty hard to beat for a product that you're just adding in while you're already in the field, anyways. Um, so on this over here is just where I calculated out all of the uh, the rates, the dollars per liter or per pound in the case of the uh, fertilizer in the ASLE. And uh, then this is basically just how my plots were all set up. So control, humic, Actigrow, Nature's Aid, ASLE, and the Lignajule. And then I generally had about a two-foot walkway in between each 
plot so I could reach over and spray. And I harvested one seed row from the front across all the trials and one seed row from the back across all the trials to try to make things as even as possible. And then down here I got my corn numbers. I don't have um, the actual control yield yet, so I just kind of threw in 22 tons here to calculate this out. So you can see we're not seeing huge differences on any of these systems. Um, the ones by Nobleford, you know, 2% on the Humic, just over that on the Catalyst system. Uh, Nature's Aid system, 6.8%. ASLE, 1%. Lignajoule, 3.5% over, you know, the control. Um, the Lethbridge was kind of a little bit opposite almost. The Humic did a lot better. The Actigrow system didn't do quite as good. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And uh, Nature's Aid actually was worse. ASLE was worse. And Lignadule was 1.5%. So I, mean, I haven't, re yeah. <clears throat> Here's basically, you know, if, I, if control yield was 22 tons, the Humic would have gotten us, you know, 22.5 tons. Nature's Aid would have gotten you 23.5 at that percent difference. But if you go down here, I think we would have been losing. So this is definitely something I'll have to uh, come up with a better way to do next year. Um, it's kind of hard to figure out your yield when you're hand calculating things in silage corn. So maybe I need to get a wood chipper to get that figured out properly. So what have we really learned from all of this? Well, small plot work isn't necessarily a fair representation of the field results. Just based on field variability, a small plot being in the wrong spot will really hurt it. Uh, without replication across multiple fields, the results really can't be verified. So that's why it's really too bad I didn't get at least two or three more of these plots harvested. Um, every field is going to be different based on its needs, whether that's, you know, different crops or, you know, so on and so forth. A field that is highly deficient in potash, for example, could have responded really well to the Actigrow system with the catalyst in there. And a field that was just generally short on fertilizer probably would have responded pretty well to the extra, like, two pounds of fertilizer from the ATG system. So, and there, of course, every crop is going to be completely different. Uh, and we see that with the corn versus the wheat. Um, next year, I'm going to come up with a new setup and I'll have some new products in there for next year. Uh, because this year, I really regretted not having ATP products as well as the Excite Bio in there. The Excite Bio is a little tricky just because it's a biological. I have to keep it alive while I'm transporting it around. So I'll have to travel around with a, with a cooler for that one. And the ATP, I never included this year because I didn't think that it would really be fair to put what's basically... A mixed fertilizer product up against biologicals I thought that it would win too easily but uh, regardless of that I think that would be a good product to have in for comparison next year thanks for watching like and subscribe and we'll see you next week